Welcome to the 6th Annual Virtual World MOOC 2019. Today is September 5th, and I'm introducing our tour guide for today's event, the tour of the InfoLit iSchool in Second Life. Sheila Weber, also known as Sheila Yoshikawa in Second Life, is a faculty member in the Information School at the University of Sheffield in the UK. She is an honorary fellow of the UK's Chartered Institute of Library and Information Professionals. Her core teaching and research areas are information literacy and information behavior. Since 2005, she has maintained the information literacy weblog at information-literacy.blogspot.com. A list of her publications are on that blog. Before becoming an academic in 1992, she had worked for the British Library, the UK's National Library. Sheila has been in Second Life since 2007. She has taught undergraduate and postgraduate students in Second Life for many years. She also led events pro and events program, including a regular journal club on Infolet High School Island, and is currently the co-lead of the Virtual Worlds Education Roundtable, a weekly Second Life discussion group that started in 2008. Her work in Second Life and in other technology-enhanced learning was cited in her University of Sheffield Senate Award for Sustained Excellence in Teaching. Sheila also likes virtual cats and shopping for virtual clothes, don't we all? And now we'll join the tour in progress. So we have quite a good group um, in Second Life. Let me scroll up and see. We have uh, Sheila, of course, Dodge Three Beards, who is uh, Dr. Greg Perrier, our other co-facilitator. We also have uh, Phryne, I've forgotten her last name, who's from Oxbridge, Quintilus Pet. Petalus Segundas, who's a teacher and artist in uh, Second Life and has some wonderful installations. Um, let me go down, Sheila, I mentioned. Beth Ghost Raven from Isti and Visti, who's a grade school teacher um, and a maven of marketing in Second Life. Um, Let's see, Eileen O'Connor from SUNY, who's going to be one of our upcoming speakers. Please get in touch with me, Eileen. Selby Evans, who's a blogger and a David Lee with David Lee is a designer of a browser-based web, web world, which is really amazing. And we're going to have two, um, uh, two uh, presentations about web worlds coming up in the course. We've got uh, Lynn Barrett from uh, Ageless Mind Project and Whole Brain Health, who is also a listener, and she's in the Zoom and in um, Second Life. And here's uh, Beth is also mentioning she's a middle school teacher librarian and owner of the Book and Tankard Pub in Victoria City um, in Second Life. Edward Tarber, who is uh, actually Dieter Hein, one of the people who's going to be talking to us about web worlds. He's an entrepreneur and a computer scientist. Rob Rahula from the Chilbo neighborhood, who teaches video game development, computer systems, computer science, and Zumba. I'm impressed. Um, Morgane, uh, Texas Gail Rem Raymond, retired from Anchorage, Alaska St School District, currently the STEM Consultant and Assessment Coordinator for the Iditarod School District in Alaska. Friney here is the Dean of Commons at Caledon Oxbridge Gateway. That's what I meant to say. Um, let's see who else. Ellie Pinion, who is also in the Zoom, Becky Adams, University of New Mexico online instructor in ed tech. Director for Online Course Development and part of Virtual Worlds Best Practices in Education, the Not-for-Profit Commons, and the Community Virtual Library here, here in Second Life. And Carlisle Chaparral, who came back to the Second Life in 2015 to bring free dance lessons to Second Life. Uh, she tags along at Virtual World Best Practices in Education. Sheila, we're good to go. So it's a good group, as you can tell. I'm going to leave the chat open on the side, and um, I'll read it as it goes along for anybody who's having difficulty seeing this on the live stream.
Welcome, Fatima, to the Zoom. And then Bluesy uh, says that she's been teaching in Second Life for eight or nine years so far. This is another member. So I have turned off everybody's names on the on the uh, video that I'm making. Ah, good. Ah, and Liz says Bluesy's a, a treasure. <laughs> How wonderful. So I'm going to twirl around a little bit so that you can see what's going on over here. Oh, I'm still carrying my knitting. Not that I actually knit in Second Life. Okay. So whenever we get moving, You'll go with me to see what's up in um, InfoLit School. This is the area where every Thursday at this time um, there is a Virtual Worlds Education Roundtable and it has been going on for a very long time, I think nine years, ten years. Sometimes we have a speaker, sometimes it's just a general open mic kind of topic. Not Well, not open mic because it's in chat. And you can also find um, past uh, chat logs. I'm going to scroll up and see if I can find where she put that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the sun is going down. I didn't notice that. Yeah, hold on a second and let me get midday. There we go. So Sheila is, has handed out a note card for everybody, which gives us landmarks and information for the for the tour. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick one up again so that I can put it up on the screen so you can see what I mean. She said Beth, Beth Ghostraven is going to help us get to where we ne need to go. So this is what was in the tour uh, information. It gives uh, landmarks and then it gives information about the virtual MOOC tour and then about uh, the Virtual World Education Roundtable and other and about literacy, the topic of information literacy. So landmark two uh, big six is where we're going to start. So Becky is introducing herself and all that stuff. Okay. So we're just waiting for the tour to start. I can pick up the, let's see if I can pick up the group. Yeah, actually I don't see the group. I'll put that up in the Moodle a bit later.
I don't see Sheila actually. Um, let me pop over to the next location and see if Sheila's over there. Uh, yeah, there's a few people over here. Ah, yeah, Sheila's here. Okay, mostly everybody's over at the... Let me get this out of here so you can... Okay, so now we're at the new location. These are simple 3D versions of two-dimensional diagrams. We have to wait for things to res in. Oh, poo, did I turn off my inventory? Yes, I did. That's okay. Oh, really? Oh, great. The lie, uh, I can't get it to work. I tried about three or four times. I tried on YouTube. Apparently, there's a problem. I don't know why. Uh, that's uh, probably them and not us. So lots of people are coming along here. Let me um, pull that uh, thing up again. Sheila is saying it's a very well used uh, model of information literacy, particularly used in schools. Um, I'm here, but I think I missed the intro, so I'm going to look at the info for this space. Oh, and she did the towers. That's cool. Let me let me go around so you can see what all's here. It's all resing in now. Uh, the big six six three D. Oh, interesting. A British model for use in the universities. Let me pull up the note card for this. Okay, we're here. Info lit iSchool Big Six and Sconal Seven Pillars. You can buy for zero lindens a board which contains the Sconal Seven Pillars model in a couple of sizes. This must be these pavilions here. You can click Info lit the owl to get a note card for the definitions and more information. Okay, so let me minimize this and that'll be helpful when we move. So Sheila is saying it's conceived as a circular model, continual improvement, um, Ra says, and Sheila goes on, so actually being able to see it in 3D is helpful, but also people don't always do one thing then the next. They sometimes plunge in and search before thinking, what do I really need? The model helps people think about that um, also, if you're not a successful and you need to go back to planning, there's a poster for that. Let me see if I can zoom in on the note card. Oh, cool. Hold on a second. Let's get to the note card. So it was developed by Mike Eisenberg. It's a process model of how people of all ages solve an information process problem. The purpose of this 3D structure is to create a learning experience that takes an avatar through the six steps of task definition, information seeking strategies, location and access, use of information, synth synthesis and evaluation. Um, and Sheila goes on to say the model helps, uh, you can buy the poster for zero lindens. This is for folks that are in world. The model can be made into various sizes. So you can use this as a teaching, uh, teaching tool yourself is what she's saying. That's really useful. There's a tiny one that floats over your head. 
and they're in this building that we're looking at over here that I'm facing away from I'm facing away from Sheila at the moment there's a PowerPoint presentation in that building so I will also put this note card up in the Moodle and if people are in Second Life and missed they can just take the note card I'll put it on the Facebook page too you can uh, take the note card and then wander around and see the various areas she's showing us let me move my camera somewhere out of the way here So somebody here is already <laughs> wearing the one that sits on your head. Okay. And this little owl gives information about inf uh, definitions about information literacy and the frameworks. I can also pop all of this up in the Facebook page as well and in Moodle later on. So the second thing Sheila wants to show us was a way she used a version of this with her students. Let me see if I can zoom in on. We have a person in front of us who is a cloud. I've been cloudy <laughs> too. That's when you've got a lot of things going on on your computer and it just can't res your body. You walk around like a cloud all day. And she has all the individual steps in their own little pavilions. So for instance, this is step five, synthesis, organizing from multiple sources, presenting the information. How will I organize my information? How will I present my information? Uh, she says, when you arrive on this installation, it's an island in the sky, so you don't go to the edge. <laughs> Okay, where are we going now? Ah, thanks. She put the link in chat. So we're going to click on that and go to the next location in theory. Oops. Okay. Wow. Let me see if I can't get off the landing point. People are going to pile up on my head. Where are we? Oh, interesting. So she set up individual uh, spots for each of the pillars. Dodge is doing a much better job than I am of getting where he needs to go. This is our other co-facilitator. That's Dodge. Dodge. All right, let me make this smaller so that I can see more. Sorry that this is a stream of consciousness over here. How cool is this? So she's basically burst out, oh, whoops, the tasks into individual locations. I have to hang on, Second Life is glitching. What? A cute little kid in a boat. You see my desktop. Okay, how did that happen? Oh, now we're back. Now, now we're you're back. back. Okay, it was yeah, it was because they were having trouble. Cute little kid in the boat. <laughs> there are a lot of cute little kids in my family. <laughs> okay. On your desktop. Yeah, I I basically my I have a picture of my brothers and a picture of Carlos and then almost all the rest of them are nieces and nephews. This is amazing. This is a lot of work here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So lots of information. Let 
I'm just giving her verbal applause because this is this is a huge amount of work and it looks super useful for students. And this is a skybox. When she talks about landscapes that you can have floating up a thousand meters in the uh, in the um, air, that's a skybox. I have my house in a skybox. So if you're low on uh, space on the ground in Second Life, you can pop yourself up in the air. And that's true of other virtual worlds as well. So she says the students were in groups. And she sets them an information problem. The year we have here was all about swine flu. This is pretty cool. So the student wanders around doing their work for each of the weeks. She said there was a threatened pandemic, and the groups had questions like, are newspapers reliable sources? Let's go see the piggies over there. That's why there's piggies. <laughs> I wondered about that. How can I prepare my workforce for swine flu? And this is the last pillar from all of their things, their conclusions. Each group had a seven pillars platform. And I would imagine what you're seeing here, our conclusion would be what was the final comments from each of the groups as they completed the assignments. So they had a structure, the groups had to structure their thinking wor working through the seven pillars. So for, for example, right here it's telling you, it shows you the final uh, map that this particular group did. Let me see if I can get over there so you can see it. Yeah, the mind map, she's saying, charted their, what they were doing from start to finish. So this is a image of the mind map of this particular group. Oh, and I see this group, you can see here are all the different pillars here for this particular group. And then when you move back out here, this is an image of this particular group's decisions about how they felt about these questions. So they said they found the tabloid papers weren't reliable as broadsheets, even if they had the same information, learned to create better search strategies, and they learned to cross-reference information and also to communicate more as a team. Okay, so she's going to go to 2B. I'm not sure where that is. So each of the things that, that, that they left here are, are artifacts that show the group's progress through the assignment. How cool is that? All right, let me see. Let me find group 2B. There's group 2A and 1A, so 2B must be in the other, or maybe I was in, no, that's 2A. 2B is over there, so let me go walk over there. Head for the stairs, she says. Okay, head for the stairs. You probably hear my, my husband and my cat in the background. <laughs> okay, so this is 2B. This is another group. So one of their artifacts is their names. And each group would have decorated their pillars, which is pretty cool. Students love to do that and be active in, in putting their work together. As Nellie knows, Nellie's the queen of active learning. Recognizing the information need. This is a little hard to read. Okay, so we want she wants us to go to the the mind map. Let me get back into my my position. Organize the spread. Let's see. Information. Where is the mind map? These are all artifacts of their of their work. How cool is this? 
seriously excellent. It gives the students a, a way to not only do the work and organize the task, but also show what they've done. Oh, here's the, is this the mind map? Yeah, uh, nope. Well, might be. <laughs> okay, so she says uh, the mind map is over here, is what they knew when they started as a group. Uh, on the other posters, they're talking about how they plan to find information. That's pillar three, how they evaluated it. Pillar six is about how they're organizing it. Where the heck is the mind map? Oop. Well, even without the mind map, this is amazing. And then they present their conclusions in the mind map. So I may have been right in front of the mind map a minute ago. Let me go see where everybody is aggregating. Yep, I'm going to go follow this and Sheila. Wouldn't that be smart? <laughs> so here we go. I was in front of the mind map. So let me see if I can, I think I may have bumped Selby out of the way. Okay. So they had, uh, we had people from the outside visit during the final session on this and the students had to be present to guide them around and answer questions. This is very cool. I don't know if you could read it. At the end, it says, final mind map aiding employees to avoid swine food flu and to manage the risk in a small business. And then it has various things that they learned along the way, like don't promote panic in the workplace, educate employees in the event of an outbreak, close down the offices. If the employee needs to take a leave of absence, another member of the staff, sh staff should be available to take over. Employ multiple cleaners, provide tissues and sanitizers, make executive decisions to send employees home if they show symptoms, and so on. The main problem was that the students mostly didn't have their own computers that could cope with Second Life. That's something we were talking about the other day as well. Let me see if I can get back over here. See what else I missed? Oh, and then they have a symptoms list recognizing the symptoms early, what the strain was, preventing the spread, and so on. So they did this, uh, these projects in class, Sheila says, though it meant they had to support each other. That's a good thing. And they were good-natured sessions. And then if you look at the VISTA that I'm looking out, you see all the other groups and all the work that all the other groups did. This must have been an amazing final session between all the groups. They were mostly 18 and 19 year olds studying information management. Gosh, fascinating. This is Sheila right here. <laughs> I wasn't sure how she was dressed at the beginning, so I couldn't follow her very easily. Sorry, guys. Okay, so now she wants to move on to the lightning tour, to an installation that she did and also used with uh, learners. So let's see. She's given us the URL, so this is great. So I'm going to click on that and head over there. I wish I was 19 and I could take a degree with, with Sheila. Okay, now we'll wait for this to res in. I think this is Ra over here in the hat. She's a neighbor in Chilbo, and this is Eileen O'Connor. You'll be seeing her later on. This lady right here and this handsome chap is our other organizer. And this is Lucena, who's in the, in the, uh, and Becky, I don't know what you look like at the moment. So I'll have to, this is Selby, who's the guy behind the web worlds. Let me put everybody's name back on for a sec.
Whoa! Doesn't want to do it for me. Let me see if it'll do it now. Yeah. Let me do show briefly. No. Let's put him on for a sec. Okay, there's Ellie over there. This is Friny. This is the inimitable ghost, Beth Ghost Raven. That means everybody is here from the other location now. So we're okay. Okay, let me take take off the, the info. Sheila says, this has got highish transparent walls, so hopefully less chance of falling off. <laughs> I know the feeling. The good news is you can fall from 5,000 feet in Second Life, and the most that will happen to you is your avatar ends up sitting on the ground when you get where you were going. So, it's okay. It says on the note card you can get from the poster in front of me. So, let's see. That's there. Okay. This ex oh, this is a research exhibition that puts out collected uh, quotations from research interviews between 2002 and 2005, investigating uh, ac UK academics conceptions of and pedagogy for information literacy. I'll also get this up elsewhere. All of these note, co co note cards will also be available um, in her wallboard in the virtual mood, uh, MOOC headquarters. I'll be putting up the wallboard when we're finished here. She said academics in the fields of marketing, English, civil engineering, and chemistry were interviewed. So this was funded research that Sheila led a while ago. Also, there are quotations from the research of one of her PhD students, Shad Salha from Syria. She did a research just before the Civil War. She's now exiled here in the UK. Oh my God, her home destroyed and many of her friends and families killed. The world. But her research was of Syrian school librarians conceptions of information literacy. literacy. That's very interesting. One great source for information about um, Information literacy also is the community virtual library here in Second Life. And um, if you go there, and I will have uh, that, all those links up on the teleport board in the headquarters and elsewhere. <clears throat> for uh, Valerie Hill, uh, Val Librarian in Second Life for her presentation. So she said it's an activity that can take 40 or 50 minutes looking at the different ideas of information literacy that people expressed. Some of them are very different ideas. I'm sorry it's still rezzing in. For instance, I can't see what's over on the note card board. <clears throat> and I have to, tr and uh, bye Judy. Judy. Judy is taking off. Um, I have tried to use color movement and some sounds. Very interesting. Let me let me twirl around so you can see what else is here. All right, let me follow Sheila. And this is a PowerPoint. If you come up, if you're in Second Life and you come up, you can come here. Whenever you see one of these big green arrow arrows, that's a pop one of the powerpoints either an arrow arrow at the top or at the bottom indicates a powerpoint and that means you can scroll through it these are some of the quotes well if you ask me to locate information literacy i would locate it in the middle it radiates light that enlightens our thoughts our souls our minds and our morale oh marvelous 
Sheila says, I will just highlight a couple here uh, So, uh, in Shad's research. Let's turn around a bit. Uh, the one I just read is the one she highlighted. It's very beautiful. In contrast, a marketing academic thought about it very differently. So that was a school librarian. So she's heading over to the marketing guy's comment. All right, where did we lose Sheila? Follow the crowd. That's the that's the best advice in Second Life. Wherever the crowd is going, go there. Oh, this is interesting. In business, nothing remains the same. One day the sky is blue, the next day it's green or red. You've always got to be on top of the news and pulling information from in from every angle. And then this is another wonderful affordance of Second Life, right? You can you can illustrate that sky here. So people not only read his quotation, but they have a visual background to it. You can tell I am blown away by this way of teaching. So Sheila is saying, for this person, information literacy was about having the very latest news. Being an expert was being on top of the latest news. So she made the floor of the image from the Financial Times. That's very smart. I didn't realize. If you look, if you look down here below our feet, that's an image of the Financial Times from the UK. Any prim, which is a, a little block that you can drop on the ground in Second Life or in other virtual worlds, you can add things to. You can add a script that makes it spin around or show different colors in a rotating basis like the ceiling. Or you can put an image on it and then include inside of it a script that will give a note card or a landmark or anything. If, you're, if you've been in Second Life, you, you know this. So his comment, uh, Sheila says, was expressing how quickly things change. You've always got to be on top of the news and pulling information from every angle. And that's why the sky in this place literally changes color. Because everything changes so quickly. A literal interpretation actually easy to do. Nothing in this quotation about morals or enlightenment. So what is information literacy is in the eye and the mind and the heart of the beholder. Pretty cool. different meaning in their lives. Both people value information and information literacy, but it has a very different meaning in their lives, Sheila says, which she thinks is important to understand. Neither of them is wrong. Though possibly both could broaden their ideas a little. Cool. Oop, I gotta click on the floor so I can follow Sheila. It's 
So here's another one. Information is very significant to my profession. Being able to find information quickly and easily is very, very important. Then to be able to use the information to apply it and make it work for you or your client. So consultancy is all about gathering and manipulating information. So she's saying if we have time to come back, um, there are quotes from engineers and chemists as well as other librarians and marketing people. The quotes from the engineers and the chemists are more practical, focused on research, getting results, evidence. Yeah, Bluezy just said that cat jumped on her keyboard. Mine has just curled up behind my screen. <laughs> so, and the other one I think is hiding. I'm not sure where she is. Probably on my husband's computer. So Sheila is saying, when I have groups of learners, we gather in the space in the middle after they've had time to look around. and think what information literacy means to them, how they might represent it, and so on. I should go around so you can see Sheila's face. There's our Sheila. I can't tell you how much I've learned from the virtual world um, education roundtable over the years. They're just astonishing. And the work of people, people like Sheila and, and other folks is just so important, I think. Information and information literacy can seem very abstract and intangible, Sheila says. Having an experience to immerse yourself in does stimulate ideas. I agree. Gives people something to react to. You're going to see a lot of that coming up. Um, Zinnia Zauber and uh, Mary Staraki, I've forgotten her in world name, Mary Lou Goldenson are going to do a presentation that focuses on the use of art. Are there any questions before our final jump? Blousey says it's like one says, Bluesy says, it's like one says it's like this purple cloud outside that you have to go get inside and do something with. That's a great idea. It's a great metaphor. I think with information overload, that's a good one to see, the one she's telling us to come back. Ah. <laughs> the purple cloud over there is behind us, she says. Let's see if I can pull out and see where the purple cloud is. Oh, I see it. There's the purple cloud. Yep, I better go back so I can move. <laughs> go follow her to the purple cloud. How cool is that? And there it is. Information is just like this purple cloud. It's a, That's out there, and you've got to go out and roll it back in and do something with it. Sheila said that was another marketing uh, person that put that together. That said that, a marketing academic. Behind here, there is a longer quote. Okay. It, oh, it rotates around. Okay, so the thing that's rotating here. Walk inside and through the walls. That's another thing I like about Second Life. Wow. 
I think I have talked myself into a position where I see information literacy not as a thing in itself, but as an emergent process, as a consequence of other things. Those other things could be anything from a library book, whoa, through an essay, through to, uh, you know, a recipe on the internet. And those things could also be skills of communication, skills of writing, language skills. Also an ethical component where information is not value neutral to be treated. It's hard to read this. <laughs> to be treated as having a moral component so that issues of right and wrong are part of information literacy. Having said that, it is made up of little bits. Those little bits are organized into some kind of process. There is a developmental sense to information literacy where one can be information illiterate when a child and one might expect to be information literate when an adult. So a number of elements, some kind of process, certainly an ethical dimension, and in the end an emergent property, something created by a series of processes which we probably already undertake at the university. Yeah, a process of things, a bundle of different bits. That's marvelous. So we're going to head to the second, the last jump. So I'm going to click on this because there goes Sheila. I hope you don't mind me blathering on. I'm so excited about everything that everybody does in virtual worlds. Everything is very, very uh, creative. Wait till you see whole brain health. You won't believe it. I mean, every single presentation we have in the virtual world MOOC every single year is maximally astonishing and creative and inspirational. So this is our final stop on the tour. One of my cats is in heat, sort of. The other one is very calm sitting here which is wonderful because she's been hiding from the wind. So Sheila says, this one is a solid landscape. And she, um, Bluesy is saying cliches have a reason because she was talking about cliche, she, uh, uh, cliches about English professors are cliches for a reason. And Bluesy says, cliches have a reason. I myself am a soldier and a farmer. I have cliches of all of those professions, also information junkie. We're still in a skybox, Sheila says, so she's telling us not to get too close to the edge or we'll fall off. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, stay put. I'm going to park myself over here by Eileen. I love your dress, by the way, Eileen. It's just gorgeous. So she's copying in the information for this area from the note card. <coughs> Sheila and Bill Johnson have been building on the framework for media and information literate cities launched by UNESCO in 2018. And then there's a, a URL here. So that's on the link on the notes card. Oh, Eileen's telling me a colleague gave her the dress. It's just beautiful. Sheila has set up a skybox with the intention of building a 3D at AFMIL city. And that's what this is. UNESCO uh, did a rather clunky cartoon of a media and information liter literary, literate city and I thought, Sheila says, it would be much better to do something in a virtual world. That is often the case. So I'm going to, I'm scrolling around so you can see the city around the edges of the skybox. Sheila has set up a poster with a diagram developed from various international frameworks, etc., for creative cities, age-friendly environments, 
that she and Bill have developed. Bill does not use virtual worlds. So let me go sideways here and get this up a little bit so we can kind of focus on this big poster. And hopefully it will res in. Okay, so you've got enfolding value, support and empowerment for older people. So this was one for a particular age group. Media and information literacy values and goals, values, policies, and vision of city councils working with older folks and other stakeholders, stakeholders to create the at AFMIL. Um, what does AFMIL stand for? Sheila says, with older people, Bill and I want to do some research work with older people, like us, Bill is officially retired. He does a lot of work with the older people's movement in Scotland. <laughs> yes, read dresses. Everybody loves your dress, Eileen. And Eileen is saying, Nicola Elaine is the developer. She used to have at Nassau Island. We moved to open source. Not sure if she still has the island. Okay, let me, let's see where Sheila went. She's saying over here. Oh, I see over here is the first bit of the city I want to work on. It's a bus stop. How cool. The idea is that a media and information literate city has an infrastructure. Even back in the 1990s, Beth, um, when Carlos and I were in, uh, I should write this down. Um, Uh, age friendly. Thanks. Thanks, Lucena. So uh, let me go back to Sheila. The idea is that a media and information literate city has an infrastructure that is media and information literate. So here on the two little posters, I have firstly the bit about transport that UNESCO gives its MIL cities framework. And then I've added points to do with age friendly. Things should not be in just one format in the physical world these days. Let me see if I can get into the, the little guys down here. Not just digital. Yeah, exactly. But peer to peer. So this is actions for city transportation from MIL Cities Framework. Set up a self serving MIL information booth in train or bus stations or boxes and buses. Display MIL-related educational posters, learning content that could be provided by UNESCO or originally developed in different types of transportation or stations. Display a global MIL week city map poster in commuter hubs. And from other frameworks, information in different media and different formats, no stereotyping in images of older people, and information for ages and different needs. So basically the idea is not just digital information, but print posters, radio, people like to consume information in different ways. Also no stereotyping of old people, of having to look grateful, leaning on arms. <laughs> Thank you, Sheila. People started grabbing my elbow to help me down the stairs when I was 51. It really drove me nuts. <laughs> now I try to leap away before the urge overcomes people. <laughs> Let me get back here so I can see everybody again. So unfortunately, even librarians and academics and people who think they're media and information literate perpetrate these stereotypes, Sheila says. And also information for different ages and different needs.
Let me throw the chat out because I'm not seeing the chat. No, it doesn't want to leave the middle of the page. Okay, never mind. <laughs> So the UNESCO guidelines say this bus stop could be a hub of information. I think that's a great idea. Would it advertise MIL events? Does anybody, what does the M in MIL stand for? Media. Thanks, Liz. <laughs> the benefits of having Lucena in Zoom and in in world. So. So it could advertise the events, deliver information in different ways. It's very smart. Also, the diagram that Bill and I developed emphasizes that older people are also creative and can critique. And we have more time to be creative sometimes, which is why I'm dragging around my knitting in my avatar's arms. It's not just a matter of helping old people catch up and having dull workshops with no creativity. Stranger is saying the experience of Second Life is a good antidote to age stereotyping. Absolutely. And in both directions. I have met very young people who use old people, <laughs> older, older avatars to increase their authority when they give presentations. So it goes both ways. So one might think how even a bus stop might give a scope for feedback and creativity. What a wonderful idea. Selby says, in virtual worlds, nobody knows you are old. Sheila goes on to say, you have a bus stop, a health, care a health center, a library, a town hall, perhaps, and so forth. And think how they could be made to help people think about these issues. Beth wants to know if everyone wants to look young in SL, isn't that another kind of age stereotyping? She says, although not everybody wants to be younger, and Stranger says, the only way I come to know someone is old is if they tell me or if they happen to mention going to events in real life that I know happened a long time ago. And Sheila says, Stranger, I find that refreshing. Me too. And I'm saying, I like to think I'm just honoring my younger self who unfortunately romped around prior to all these wonderful digital experiences. But I have to say, YouTube and virtual worlds has made me understand that expertise can come out of any mouth. Um, and I, you know, some of my best mentors in certain, say, video editing procedures and things like that are 12 year olds who are live streaming their gaming because they know what they're doing and they have a clear way of expressing. And you know, so you never know who's going to be the one that hands it off. So in a way, it's kind of nice in a digital world. You can be who you are. Sheila says, yes, and it just pixels after that. It's not really like I'm trying to rejuvenate my flesh. <laughs> and Ross says she's putting her walker away. Selby says, I tell people I'm nearly 90. And Morgan is saying, old is a state of mind. And Sheila has closed up the tour. She says, uh, that's it for the tour. I would like likely organize, I will likely organize sessions here in the future to share ideas. 
and we're just telling her as uh, Lone says, you have made a major contribution here, Sheila. Thank you so much.